Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is going to be a little bit of a different one, but first I have to have a disclaimer. In the bottom right you'll see my face, and I'm talking, but you see my face is not synced up with this voice because I forgot to turn on my microphone. So we're just going to record over this video because it's difficult to re-record this constantly. So bear with me, but basically this is um, recreating the jokes app tutorial in Elixir Phoenix. Um, so basically this is just a tutorial app that Remix made to show off some of its functionality and to learn the app. Um, it's not really like testing the limits of Remix in any way, but it's still kind of a fun project to show off how you can make something extremely similar in 15 minutes using Elixir and Phoenix. So that should be pretty fun. Um, Start off, I'm going to set a 15 minute timer to kind of prove to myself that I was able to do it in this amount of time, and you. So, here we go, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a new um, Phoenix app. You just do this with a, you know, Mix Phoenix new, and I call it Jokes Elixir. Doesn't really matter what we call it, obviously. Or Jokes with a Z, I guess it ended up being. So yeah, then I'm going to install some dependencies. I have to compile those dependencies. It just takes a minute. Um, I'm going to cd into the app, and then I'm going to open up my code editor. I'm going to cut this a little bit here and there. I still kept within the 15 minutes, but sometimes things just take a long time to load. I don't feel like I need to watch that. So starting up the server there. Um, so now it's just trying to start up, <laughs> and after that, then I'm just going to set up the database real quick using mix ecto.setup. This basically just creates the database tables and names everything properly, um, including a test database, which we won't use the test database this time, but it's just important to know. Now this, I'm going to first initialize it with git in a second. There we go. Um, but then after that, I'm going to generate our first model. When you use mix phx dot gen dot um, HTML, basically this will generate like everything from the HTML of crud operations for the jokes and um, it'll generate tests, it'll generate a route that you can copy and paste into your route file that I'm just about to do, and it'll generate all the migrations you need. So it really generates a ton of code. You can see it listed up there briefly. Um, this is one of the things that made me be able to do this in the 15 minutes, honestly, is being able to quickly generate uh, basically an end-to-end -end working uh, joke app really honestly um so i'm at the 12 minute mark here so now this is just the basic app you can't see the joke model yet um but you can see that it's at least working um so you just go to the slash jokes route and then now you can see this is kind of the default phoenix html interface so this is creating a new joke. You can create it, you can save it. You can go back to the list. You can create another joke. I'm just gonna put some example information in here. Um, so then when you go back to the list, you can see, oh yeah, they got all the three different operations. You can even delete them. Um, it really gives you a great starter. Does it look pretty? No, but it really does provide a really great structure to build off of because it kind of gives you a ton of um, things that show you how to do all the different operations you'd want to do on a model. Obviously you can delete those or disable them, or move things around or change the way they look, but yeah, it's a really great place to start. So next I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, this was an idea I had to include some code to get the jokes so we could do the sidebar. Um, but I ended up actually moving it to not this file, 
but to the jokes view file because I think that's actually a better place to put it because that's very specific to the jokes um, file in particular. So I'm going to skip ahead to that. So here's the jokes view file. So basically, this is a bunch of functions that are available to the HTML template uh, within the view section of the app. So you can always call the list jokes function within there, and you'll just have access to that function and any of the templates that are underneath the joke. So it makes it a pretty good place to do a kind of a sneaky database call. I mean, normally you wouldn't put database calls in the view file, but when you want to include something on every single page, like the sidebar, it ended up being kind of nice. So, you know, do with it what you will, but I thought it actually ended up being a pretty good place to put it for this particular situation. So now I'm just adding some uh, divs, the layout div for um, basically creating that sidebar so that we can have that persistent sidebar where it always, always has the jokes on the side, like the jokes app has. So now I'm just going to loop through all those different jokes and list them in the sidebar. Naturally, if you're doing this for more legitly, you'd probably to put a limit on the query so that there wouldn't list all the jokes if there was too many. In this situation, I didn't do it just yet, um, but I could always go back to that list jokes function and add that functionality really easily if I wanted to. But for this little example, didn't worry about it. So now I'm just constructing this link to function. I'm going to steal it out of the example in the index page. Just to kind of make it a little easier on myself and remember how the syntax exactly for the routes and all that. This routes.joke path is actually really cool because if you ever change the URL to where the jokes are held, then all the, the all of the app will fix itself more or less. Cause and that's one benefit of like having an HTML driven app is that, you know, if you change pages at all, everything kind of updates, you know. So that will be fixed. Obviously, if you have like a bookmark or something, it would break. Now, it's like I'm encountering a bit of a syntax error. Um, it's because I didn't add that do on there, which is, you know, an easy common thing that happens at Elixir because some languages don't require that do, in particular Ruby. But not that I've been doing Ruby lately, but, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. So I don't know what my excuse is, but more or less, there's a syntax error right now. So then I'm just doing the full qualified path, and then it obviously works. Um, there's probably some way to avoid that, honestly, but I was trying to do this fast, so that's what we're doing. So now you can see that the sidebar is just kind of like sitting there at the top of where it's listing the jokes perfectly, but the CSS is not applying properly. That is because I have not written the CSS yet. So you can kind of see me go down and I start writing all that CSS. Um, yeah, so this is basically what I ended up with, where it's basically just flexing it so that they're beside each other. And then I added a little 33% width for the sidebar just to make it kind of sit on the left properly. So now we're going to add Unpoly. Unpoly is a really awesome library that essentially allows you to turn a normal kind of HTML app into more of a SPA kind of experience where the, the pages don't fully reload and clear all the JavaScript um, and, you know, do the normal kind of white screen of flashing <laughs> that uh, happens with normal apps like this. Um, so basically, you're going to throw in the script. Um, I'm installing it via npm install, although later on it ends up not working and I just end up using the CDN version of it. Um, so we're basically right now I'm trying to figure out how to configure it so that all the pages, all the links on the page will will automatically be upgraded uh, by Unpoly so that they'll load properly. So now you can see, um, this is actually the network panel. So you can see that when I click on the different links, it doesn't actually like do any network requests. And that's because these pages have already been visited before, so it caches them. This is the new page, so you can see that one show up in the sidebar. But um, yeah, submitting this form um, will reload the page fully. Uh, that's just because I didn't configure the form to do it. Uh, but that also does help this uh, sidebar to update properly. So 
It's actually kind of not too bad of a side effect in this situation, although you can definitely fix that problem with unpoly and still have a nice sidebar without reloading the full page. Um, I just didn't do it in this current thing, although it'd be literally adding like one attribute on the form, honestly. And maybe you could even configure it globally. Uh, so at this point, my 15 minutes is basically done. I obviously could have done this faster if I would have tried to, honestly, if I would have tried again. Um, but it's pretty good. I mean, uh, it's got all the kind of um, functionality of the app. And I think that's pretty admirable for 15 minutes, especially considering how many mistakes I made along the way. Um, so yeah, now I'm just kind of showing the different uh, features of Unfolly. So now I'm actually gonna show you this kind of cool feature of it that I like probably more than I should. But basically it's the ability to take any HTML page and then turn it into a modal really fast with like a single HTML attribute. So we're gonna show you that. It's just built into the library and so you can just kind of do it. You can obviously, it comes with some default styling on the modal, but you can configure it via CSS, of course. Um, so I basically just take this uh, new joke span or this link or no, I guess, sorry. I think I'm kind of changing my mind. I do it on the edit um, page. So you basically do up layer new. That basically says, hey, you know, throw whatever page this is going to be into a new layer. So when the page loads, you just hit the edit button and now it's in a modal. The only downside is the sidebar is also in the modal, but that's actually really easy to fix as well. So I wanna show you how to do that. So now I'm just going to wrap this in a div that says edit form on it. This makes it easy to have a CSS selector that I can tell Unpoly to grab out so that it doesn't grab all the HTML that's returned, but just the, the HTML that I want returned. Um, and this is useful if you want to have a link to that page, the edit page, and you don't want it in a modal, but you also sometimes want it in a modal, which sometimes happens with like settings pages and stuff. I'm just doing it kind of here to illustrate it even if it's not like the perfect um, CSS. So, so right now it has a little bit of a bug where I didn't specify, uh, use the CSS selector. Um, I just said the class, but I need to put a dot in the front of it. So I'll figure that out now. There you go. Now I threw the dot in there and I believe it works now. So we go back, hit the edit thing. And now it's in a modal, so there you go. So now this is fully functional. So if you, you know, edit this joke, say cool new joke and then you know modify it in whatever way I want then I can hit save and then um, yeah the modal closes and then it does that so it's kind of cool that unpoly handles that um, so yeah really easy way to throw in a modal here and there which can be really really beneficial to building an app okay I just wanted to show you a little more thing so I added the logout and login page I did this really easily all i literally all i did was run um makes vfx dot gen auth then you just specify some stuff to name it and then boom you have working login logout page with settings um login little checkbox to stay signed in oops Obviously, it checks the password properly and, you know, gives you a settings page. And so this just generates off view. Cool. The other thing I noticed is because this is like instant click, this is actually faster than this app. You, I mean, like this one's not slow, but you can definitely see a little bit of a delay between click and that. And then you click over here. Instant. Instant. I'm kind of like pausing before I click, but click. it's basically as soon as I click, right? So yeah, that's nice. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you liked it, and stay tuned for any other videos. I don't post that often, so when I post a video, it's probably going to be related to this kind of topic. So. Um, don't be afraid to use the notification icon. I won't probably bother you by spamming you tons of videos because I'm just not able to produce that many. So anyways, peace.